Hi everybody, it's Joni here at Joni's Journals. And yes, I know it's Monday afternoon and it's a very strange time for me to be making a video, but I didn't have a chance to do this yesterday and I wanted to show everyone what I've been playing with. I have been creating faux cellophane tape. Well, I should say faux vintage cellophane tape. Can you see it right there and right there and right there? And up here and I even put some on the back so that it looks like somebody popped open this envelope with maybe a scissor or a knife and left the tape behind. So how do we make that you ask? I'm gonna show you. See I put it on my little folder with one of the um, mushroom oh gosh I forgot what they're called again <laughs> the film, the, I can't remember, whatever. And I put it on one of the specimen slides that I made that I was showing you yesterday. And you can see it goes around to the back. And I put it on another of the specimen slides that I was showing you yesterday. And I put it in little places so it looks like these pieces, pieces of ephemera are taped on. So yeah, that's what we are going to do today. Now I do wanna give kudos. Here, see, this is some of the tape that I made and I cut it into little strips. You can see the little bubbles on it. I'm trying to get it. See the little bubbles on it? So it looks like it's really kind of old. I'll put that aside. And these are some of the pieces that I made. Oh, here's another piece that I made. I'm trying to get it so it doesn't reflect in the light. If I push the light back too far, you're not gonna be able to see what I'm doing. And here's another piece that I made that I haven't cut up yet. Doesn't that look yummy? <laughs> I'm going to, again, tell you who I saw this. I saw it on Crafty by Tony. Um, she made it and she used what they refer to as sticky back paper. I am using what we would normally refer to as um, contact paper, although this shows as easy liner. It's sticky on the back. This one's made by the Duck brand. I got it at Walmart, and I believe this roll, which was 18 inches by 24 feet, it was about 750 or so. And so I've been cutting it up. I've cut up a few for us to do today and I'm going to show you how I make it you need that and if you see on the back I've cut these into six by six squares and I'm going to use my new distress oxide spray that I just got from Amazon you can see I'm pulling out my greens in hope of getting some Christmas crafts doing done this year and some Christmas cards I'm actually going to move that like that. I just want to kind of keep it flat so you can see what I'm doing. And I am using the uh, Ranger alcohol ink. And I'm using ginger and oregano and butterscotch. I don't remember what colors um, Crafty by Tony used when she made hers. You are also going to need something to rub the alcohol with once you have it applied to the um, contact paper. And as I told you on Saturday, I did a little bit of shopping at Michael's and I bought some of the alcohol ink daubers and pads. So what you do, I've been doing it this way and it's been working out well for me, is you put down a few drops of each color, not too much. I put the cap back on that before I'm wearing it. I put on my came home from school today and I put on my sloppy clothes. That's the oregano. This one is the butterscotch. I put the oregano on to give it like a deep tone. And then I am going to put on the ginger. A few drops of that. And we'll get some in there and some there and some there. Get a few over here. And then what we're gonna do 
is we are going to smear it around on our contact paper. I'm gonna put the bottle down. I'm gonna move this one because it's in my way. And we're just gonna smear it around, catch it all, put the bottle back down so that it stays. You can hold it down with your finger if you like. And let's get it up here. Put the glass back down and get a little over here. And then to get some effects, I've been stomping my little alcohol dauber onto the contact paper to get like those little bubbly spots. That's Roger snoring in the background. And then I blow on mine because the alcohol ink dries relatively quickly anyway. I don't have a fancy heat tool. Oh, see, there's a little spot here that I missed. Let me get my little dauber, try to get some in there, and stomp again. And I'm gonna let it dry, I'm gonna blow on it. But it dries almost immediately. And what I've been doing to test it, oops, if I can hold it, is just taking a paper towel and dabbing it on in different spots to check to see if it's dry. That's a spot from my paintbrush that I was using yesterday. And so nothing's coming off. So I would say it's dry to the touch. And we're gonna put that one aside. And we'll do another one real quick. Get my little bottles and my jar back. My little glass there. And a couple of the bottles. Actually, I'm gonna put that bottle there and I'm gonna hold this one here. Get out my ink. I guess we'll start in the same pattern that we were yesterday. And I honestly don't see too much of a difference in the colors once you start to blend them. But let's try this one with a little bit more green on it and see what we get. I don't mind. If I don't like it, I'll just fix it. Put that like that cap on there, get a little bit of the butterscotch, put that on, let's see, whoop, and yeah, this is all you have to do. Okay, I'm gonna put the cap on it. I don't want to get alcohol ink on my wood desk. And then we'll take a little bit of the ginger and we'll put that on like that. Whoop. Put this over here. Okay. And grab our dauber and start smearing. See how it runs all over the place? This has got a little bit of, more of the green in it. And let's get that over there and put that there. See how that goes. Let's move that one. Oh, move that one over here. Try to catch up all the corners. And we'll move the little glass. And we'll put it over here. I think what Tony had done was once she cut her paper, she left it under a book for a little while. And whoop, kind of got the roly poliness out of it but I haven't been doing that. And let's see, we'll start splotching and making those little bubble marks. Cause I don't know about you, but if you remember, cellophane tape always sort of, not only lifted in spots, but it bubbled in certain spots once it got a little old. Let's put that there and stomp on it. And then I'm gonna put my dauber here and I'm gonna blow on it. And let it sit and give it the paper towel test. Whoop, let me grab a hold of my paper towel. You can hear it's a little sticky, 
but it's not really wet, okay? So you can kind of move this out of the way. Let's see, did we miss a spot? Mm, we kind of missed a spot up there. So let's get our dauber and we'll splotch it over there. And I think we're good to go. So there we go. So we've got, oop, we got a little spot over there from that cup. So let's grab our dauber. Have no fear, the dauber is here. And let's splotch that down a little. There we go. We'll let it sit and we'll do the old fashioned flip it in the wind kind of thing to get it dry. And there's another piece for you. Okay, I'm gonna put that one aside and I'm gonna move all this stuff because I think you've seen enough on how to do it. I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna put it aside and I'm gonna grab one that I made yesterday because I know it's dry. And I am going to show you that on the back, you have a grid pattern. Now what I've been doing is since one of these, each one of these little boxes is an inch, I've been cutting my strips into one inch strips because you know how what well, scotch tape, I don't know what else it's called because it's made by the company Scotch Plaid or something like that. And so we just refer to it as scotch. I've been cutting it in one inch strips because that's a standard size of a roll of tape. You know, your regular everyday tape, not your fancy packing tape or anything like that. And so I've been using the grid on the back and just cutting it into one inch. And then if I want it a little bit thinner because they make half inch tape, I'll cut it one of the one inches in half. I think this is a little bit less than an inch, but I'll cut it in half. It cuts very easily. And then there we go. Let's see if I can find one of these little things that I was working on yesterday. Here, we'll take the file folder, this, and this is one of the film strips. And it actually, since you can't glue on vellum because that's what I printed this on, you can't really glue on vellum very well. I mean, you can, but it bubbles and puckers. I just put it down with the, um, the contact paper and it worked. So let's see, let me find if I can get a hold of a piece of ephemera. Here we go. Here's one, it's a B. We can use that. And we'll just stick it onto the back of our folder with using our tape. Now, this is the tricky part because you kind of have to start the contact paper sort of the way you would start a vellum sticker. I roll the edge, and this could take forever. <laughs> I hope not. I roll the edge till it kind of separates, and we're almost there. There we go, I think we got it. And I use my, my little pretty little awl that was a gift from my friend Cheryl, and it is beginning to separate, I think. Oops, is it? Yep, there we go. See, it's separated already. Peel off the back. Put this aside, now I've lost my ephemera. Oh, I forgot to ink the edge, that's all right. And then we can just take it and we can quote unquote, tape it down with our faux cellophane. Let me cut off this edge because it's a little long. I don't want to wrap it around on this case. Whoop. There we go, I lost my piece. And there you have it. It works just like tape. Isn't that awesome? Well, you guys, I hope you had fun. I am going to end this video now because I don't wanna bore you <laughs> with making tape and sticking things down. But these are just some samples of how I used it. In this case, I used it to stick down the little negatives. That's what they're called, the negatives. <laughs> the negatives. And I used it on my 
uh, specimen slides. And I, on this one, I use it to make it look like it's holding down those little flowers. And here's, this is the envelope that I said that I made the wrong size for the card that I made the other day. So I decided to make it something that I can use in the Mycologist Notebook Journal. And so, yes, these things are glued down first and I put the tape on after, but there you go. There's our faux vintage cellophane tape. I do want to warn you of one thing. This wasn't sticking too well. So I had taken my bone folder and I was pushing it down. The ink stays on if you touch it, it isn't gonna come off. But if you start scratching it, it will come off. But I kind of like that effect too. See how there's a, a little light spot where I scratched off the alcohol ink by accident, but it's still a pretty cool effect. So there we go. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please like, comment, and subscribe. And have a wonderful rest of your day. I'm going to go unpack from school and sit and relax for a bit before the hubby comes home. Bye, everybody. Hugs. Like, subscribe, and comment. And I will see you soon. Okay? Bye-bye for now.